okay so uh, in uh, in the, the, the remaining time we are trying to analyze uh, uh, how to get to this application uh, in React? Right now, the project that we we downloaded is only static. You see, it's only, it only only has a, a render method with a, with the static components with the fixed data and so on. So the the scores, the courses, and so on are all fixed. Um, and we want to translate that into React by trying to de devise some set of components. Uh, uh, and especially the, um, the properties uh, and the, the states uh, among these components, okay? So uh, let's imagine that uh, everything is our application app, okay? Um, and we need to break the application down into several components. So uh, what you see here is, for example, the application may be composed of a title, and uh, um, a, a table with the exams. So we may call it a title and uh, uh, exam table. Okay, so the app will render a title component and an exam table component, uh, maybe in the same uh, bootstrap container and so on. Uh, the title by itself will be a very stupid component, uh, or uh, but uh, the exam table again it will be a, a dynamic component, okay? Um, because it will contain many rows, so it will have some header and so on that will be generated by the table. But we can imagine having another component that will uh, render one row. Hmm? Let's call it exam row. And after that, uh, the exam row contains information about an exam and some action buttons. So we, I could imagine, maybe um, for for reason of maintenance, of separating the um, information about the exam from the uh, controls. Okay, each row will contain two groups, basically, of columns. One could be uh, the exam information, and the other would be the, exam, the, the controls. Okay? Uh, I don't know, uh, we can call that uh, um, exam info. And the other one could be the uh, exam controls. Okay. All of these, uh, so we have a hi hierarchy uh, of components. App will contain title and exam table. Exam table will render a list of exam row. Exam row will uh, render uh, a couple of exam info and exam contents. And exam info and exam content will render uh, basically the text uh, and the numbers uh, or the icons. So the idea is to try to break the page down into components that have uh, each one as a specific role, and they may have different props or different states uh, for each of them. Okay. All the information here will come from um, from uh, the tables. You just remember you, we are coming from uh, exercises where this information was stored into different tables uh, into a database. So we can imagine that this data uh, will not be, um, let's say, statically defined, but will be determined by, by some data properties. But let's make it one step at a time. No? Usually, what we when we think about a new application, a new layout, we start from a static application. We try to break it down into a component. We make a static version of this component, and then we can start injecting data and properties into these components to make them uh, gen dynamically generate with the um, with the say new data. And then we think about the state and how to uh, evolve this information. Okay, one one step at a time. So I think the first step would be to transform uh, the current app, which is a, a, a monolith, everything in app, into this set of components. 
okay we may choose to put the components into separate files uh, or to put all of them into the same file uh, depending on our preference uh, or maybe have one one file for app and one for all the other components uh, as you prefer basically mm. uh, you just play with the with the imports and exports uh, uh, so just since I'm I'm migrating them, I, I would prefer to have a separate file. So a separate file, of, let's call it uh, uh, into source. Let's call it uh, uh, let's say exam components. The JS where I put all the components inside. Okay. So my app will basically transform into one title okay it's already structured like this in uh, you see that in um, in uh, in bootstrap uh, let me zoom a bit the font so it's more readable uh, from from the bootstrap styles we already have two rows so we can use one row for setting the title and the second row for setting the, the table so it's easy because we just have to define a title I am working on the second file that will return basically the same content that we have here only one column with the h1 so I remove it from here and put it there with parentheses of course and I need of course to import some stuff so I need to import a call from from react sorry react bootstrap okay and uh, uh, title is the it should be exported so that the main that the app may see it for example And once I replace this, uh, I can instantiate a title component in the app and just be done with it. Of course, title needs to be imported from exam components. So I have this import title from exam components. And this should update our application in an invisible way of course and I, I go forward with this uh, method of breaking down so the first row is okay I go into the second row where we have all of this information here this should be basically the uh, what we call the the exam table component so we create a second component which called exam table props we remember to export also the name of this exam table and we move here at the first step all this code uh, okay and we put it here in return all this code Uh, read uh, okay, there's a new too much table is a, is a bootstrap component, so you must import it and everything else. Oh, icon edit icon detail the icons uh, we may remove them from the app that doesn't need them anymore and move them to these components. Okay, and now I reload the application and uh, something is wrong. Uh, what's wrong here? Okay, I didn't put the, sorry, I didn't insert the call to exam table into the app. So now 
it's again there. So we are breaking down the application into smaller pieces. Uh, in this case, we are working top down from the top level of the structure by moving information from the um, top level into the, the, the individual components. So the responsibilities for, for rendering for the graphical layout will be shifted, uh, let's say, backwards toward the bottom. Uh, you see that even column and table is not need, are not needed anymore as properties here as imports. Okay, and now we can do the same with the exam table uh, by breaking it down into a title. Uh, where is that? Okay, but generating the title and generating many exam rows. Okay, so what is an exam row? An exam row is basically this uh, row of information here. So we may replace this with an exam row component. Basically with four of them. Hmm? And the, the component exam row will just return this line, this code here. Return this code, semicolon, indent. Uh, shift, like this. And so we can remove everything here. So we have a table heading with the headers, of course, and a table body that contains four exam rows. Of course, what we, what we lost here is the, the difference between the, the names because now we have four copies of the same identical row. But we will recover that with uh, dynamic properties later on. And finally, we said that the exam row should be the the union of some exam information and some exam controls. So we must break this exam row into two different subcomponents. Function exam information and uh, some function exam uh, what's that? exam controls. Okay, the exam information should return the first three columns of the table. So I should, I should wrap them into a fragment because I'm returning more than one node. Like this. And the second one, we don't return the, that, the, the last uh, table. The last table data, the last cell. And so exam info and exam controls can, can just replace the content of these rows here. Exam info slash and exam controls. Hmm, exam con. So let's see. It. Okay. So of course the the look of the table is the same, but we now are generating the different parts in different small smaller components. Okay. So this was our first step, creating the hierarchy of components and uh, creating okay and calling each other we see that we have all a, a, sort of a structure creating the application and all the information is just here inside exam information okay but right now it's static so we may for example do a first commit uh, we call it so that we have the history of what we are doing we may make a first commit uh, we can call it uh, um, um, a component hierarchy.
okay I will push it later at the end of the of the class right now we're just saving the different points so that we can go back in history and see the different modifications okay uh, about uh, the dynamic nature of these components so which are the components that need uh, some information for rendering themselves title doesn't need any extra properties exam table well for itself it only needs to know how many rows it wants to it needs to create and uh, uh, of course it needs to pass to x to each exam row some information information that is not needed by the exam row component itself but by the exam info uh, yes no but the exam info component actually needs uh, to know what to put here so our endpoint is having this information here inside the exam info. Uh, where do we get this information? Well, of course, this information should come from above. Uh, exam info should render information that is given, specified by exam row, and exam row will uh, uh, receive them from exam table, and exam table will receive the information from the app, for, probably. So what we could do, so uh, in the in the future, uh, we will say that the exam table will get information from the server. We'll do some asynchronous call from the server and get the information it needs. For the moment, we still don't have a server, so we can do what we did uh, um, the, the last time. Uh, in the other example, just put some static information uh, here. Hmm. Uh, so let me just uh, copy and paste some uh, um, arrays sorry that I've saved so that I, I don't have to which are the same that we had in the labs in the previous labs uh, yes basically we are in the, in the classes we are doing the same steps that you are going to do with the, with the labs so we are trying to, to, to keep in sync okay so I have I say I preferred these two arrays that it will inject here. I call them uh, fake exams and fake courses uh, that contain some information about a course code, score, and date, the exams. Uh, and uh, the courses are the, the names. I call them fake, uh, no, basically, because I, I should remember these are not the real data. It's not the real um, uh, source of information. Is just a place where we send some data that in the future will need to be integrated with the database. Okay, we are trying to decouple them in, the, in a very crude way with these fake uh, arrays. Uh, I also have the JS here. I'm using it for creating dates, so I should probably install the JS. And while it's installing, I need to import also. AJS from the AJS. Okay, save and restart. I had to stop the application just because we are I'm changing the packaging. Okay, so right now I, I just I didn't change anything, I just added these two variables. And so we can imagine that uh, the app will be passing this information down to the exam table. Say, OK, this ex dear exam table, the list of courses is uh, this one. And uh, the list of exams uh, that you already are given is this one, fake exams. Okay, so in this case, uh, the app is the only one that knows that these data are fake. Okay, otherwise the um, the exam table will just take this list of courses, list of exams as they were real. Okay, so we go into the. Um, okay, so I get these two properties. For the moment, they are just properties; they are not states yet. Okay. There's no state for the moment. 
we will make a complete version only using properties, not using states. The state will be the next step okay, in the design. So, um, right now, exam table receives these two properties, this list of courses and the list of exams. Does it need them? Well, yes and no. It needs them to, uh, to create the, the list of, of rows. Okay, so in the, in the table body, instead of writing um, four times the exam role, I, I, sh I should take the list of exams, props, dot exams, which is an array, and for each element in this array, I should create one exam role. So I use a map again. Um, where in this map we take one exam and we generate one exam row okay with the specification of this exam for example uh, remember that since we have uh, we are creating a list we always should remember the key. So the key should be a unique value that the, that uh, identifies each of the rows. So it may be just uh, exam dot course code, course code, right? So I'm working with the exam table. This this one. So I'm creating one, two, three, four exams, and the key for distinguishing each of the four, of course, is the code of the course. Is not the score, it's not the date, because they are not uh, unique values. OK, so in this case, I'm mapping, I'm creating four rows right now. And I'm giving these rows, uh, let's open the inspector. And I'm giving the rows this information. I'm giving, I, the key is the course code, as you see here. And the properties uh, are here. The object exam. So every each line receives uh, uh, the object describing the single exam that that specific uh, uh, row should display. Okay. So this object has the course code, has the data, and has the score. So we may uh, insert them. The exam row receives this information. Right now, it is not. Uh, it needs just to pass them down to the exam info. So yes, the exam info. So the one way is to just uh, uh, pass all of them. OK, so this is the syntax where we take all the properties that we received and we regenerate the same properties at the lower level. If we look at the inspector, we see that the exam row is receiving this exam property and exam info is also receiving the same exam property. So it's a handy syntax when you just want to pass down all the properties that we received to some of the children. And we are just unpacking all the properties and uh, um, and passing them like we had uh, written many, many different properties one by one. In this case, we only have one, but uh, uh, if we had to add the new properties here, they will be automatically propagated also to exam info, if we want to propagate them, of course. OK, so exam info. At this point, we can uh, change. Uh, it now receives the exam property, and we can use it for displaying, for example, the exam.score. Is it called score? Yes. Uh, so not exams, but props. Sorry, props. Dot exam. Dot score, and the data would be maybe the props. Dot exam. Dot data. Uh, is date? Is it called date? Yes. Sorry, I need to check every time. Uh, format uh, maybe in. Uh, day, month, uh, year, for example. And I have this information now being updated with different scores and different dates. 
I still have a problem because the exam object contains the course code and uh, I want to display the course name. So I need to do a bit of work for getting the course name down into this uh, um, into this component. Uh, the course, uh, you see that the exams only contain the code and for getting the name of the course, we should uh, query the fate cor the courses table. So in some way, we should have a, a, a sort of a join operation where we look up uh, the courses table and uh, add the name there. Uh, what can we do here, for example? Uh, maybe we could have uh, add an, one exam name here. Exam name. Uh, so that it's available. Uh, and of course, exam table should receive uh, already received the table of the courses, the fake courses table. So uh, how can we compute the exam name? Uh, okay, is the, the name attribute of the course that has the same course code of this exam. So basically it's a, it's a, a bit of a, so let me go into a different row. I need to take the courses. I filter them by selecting the courses that have the same course code. So courses C with the course code, so C dot course code equal to exam dot course code. Okay. So you see what I'm doing, I'm taking all the courses and with filter, I'm just uh, finding the ones uh, that, sorry, where the course code, uh, say attribute of the course is the same as the course code of this exam that we are creating in this specific row. So this exam is the same variable that we are using to create the rows. Now we have uh, uh, the filter is still an array, an array of all the codes, so there should be only one. So I could take the first one. This is still an object where I need to take only the name attribute. It should do something. And so this is just a, you know, a, an exercise in, um, in, uh, in functional programming. Give me the name of, of a course for which I know the course code. And now I have this exam name attribute being passed to exam row. Exam row will automatically propagate it down to exam info. And exam info is if everything is right, and you, know, you can never be sure, but it should have a props called exam name. And if everything is right, Okay, we go there by saving the file and we see the actual names and sh they should map. So we completed our uh, second step. Uh, recreating the application from, from uh, one single data location. In this case, it was some fake data into app and propagating the right uh, um, data down to the components where they are needed. Of course, at every step, we are doing some, some a, a bit of processing, like here, just to extract the information, extract the data that we need. OK, so at this point, whenever this data changes, so instead of 28, 18, we, take, uh, we get 27. Uh, of course, we need to restart the application, and uh, we see the, the data that the old interface, everything will be regenerated from that array, from those two arrays. And so we have a second milestone, so we can commit that. Say, okay, um, we want to add, 
uh, generate dynamic generation with proper propagation. And this would be enough. Okay, is everything clear up to now? So this would be enough uh, if we don't have to mutate anything. So everything is uh, dynamically generated, but everything is also constant. You cannot change anything. What if we wanted to change something? So maybe I want to implement uh, the first and easiest uh, um, function of all, the delete. Okay, so let's implement the delete function just to check uh, to see what what it means. Okay, all the other the edit and the insert are something that will come later. We need to understand how to do forms in React. Okay, but the delete is very easy. You click on the button, you just delete the the, the code, the course. Um, what do I need? First of all, I need uh, that these arrays can be modified. Right now, these are just properties, and inside the exam table, this is just a constant. This property exams is just a constant. So, uh, if we, if I want the application to be able to modify this, that table, that table should not be a property anymore, but should be a state variable, because there will be a piece of information that will change, and of course, according to the change of the information. In the exam table, this state should be in the exam table. It's the only place where you have the visibility over everything. So, if we want to make it modifiable, we should create a new state, like uh, at least the exams, not the courses. The courses can be static, but the exams uh, should be dynamic, should, should be uh, a state variable. So, exams, we, we can create a new use state uh, variable that will, a state variable that will be, of course, we need to import it from React. So, we have this uh, import use state from React. And uh, the initial value of this state is just props.exams. So we are doing something which is not very, we will see that it is a bit dangerous copying the state from the properties when we have, uh, when we will have the same dynamic uh, behavior uh, from the client server architecture. But for now, we just have the initial value of the exams copied from the list uh, of exams that we receive as a property. So props.exams is read only, exams is modifiable, is a state. And this means that we should just uh, use exams instead of prop.exams when we create the table rows, the exam rows. If I'm using exams, I'm using the state variable. So whenever the state variable changes, automatically this table will be updated. If I save it here, nothing should change because the only difference, we know that this table, the exam table, has been, contains a state now. And the state contains this set of exams. If we try to delete one of them in the debugger, we see that uh, immediately the interface is updated. Of course, the props, the property exam didn't change. We are not making permanent changes. We are only making changes that last uh, inside this application. You see, if I reload the application, everything is back uh, from start. But uh, we see that now the, the, the table rows are being generated from the state information. And the only trick uh, would be to make the delete button work, uh, would be to be able to modify the state. OK, for modifying the state, what should we do? First of all, the uh, delete button should be clickable and uh, uh, should have a, a callback function to delete uh, an exam. So I should try something like, like let's put it to a spam, for example. 
so that I can attach this icon uh, can attach an event tender on click equal to callback function props dot delete exam of props dot uh, exam dot course code this is what I should do we are here inside exam controls right when I click on delete I should call a, some delete exam method that will come from above and give which is the exam that I need to modify we assume that we are also receiving maybe the, some exam object with a course code that uh, is the parameter for deciding uh, which exam to delete right of course uh, right now the exam controls receive nothing so i should propagate uh, propagate at least the exam property so that if i propagate in the exam then the object can extract the course code and I should propagate some delete exam method so, uh, so so that this can be called delete exam equal to delete exam and of oh, sorry props dot delete exam because I should receive it exam row doesn't have the, the possibility of changing the state the state should only be changed by the exam table. So again, exam row will receive the reference to this function so that it can pass it down to exam controls so that can really use it. And uh, now, so we need in, uh, in calling exam row here, we should also add another property, which is the ex, um, delete exam. by giving a reference to a function which in this case we are defining it here so we are the owners of the state so we can define this function here so let me go up here and define this delete exam function which is a function that takes a code and then what does it do it will update the state set exams so what is this code code is the parameter that was passed here when we call the function all of this props drilling is called like in the with the props you drill level upon level upon level of components until you reach the components you want and here you have this function so this delete exam is exactly a reference to this one and so the parameter that you get here is exactly the parameter that you are passing here, which is the course code associated to the button corresponding to the row in which this button is inserted, this icon is inserted. Okay, <coughs> last step. Since we need to delete one row for, from the exams, the row with this code, uh, we cannot really delete it we must recreate another set of exams remember that the state is replaced is not updated so we cannot just delete one line you must we must create another array where this line disappeared basically okay so we must recreate a new array maybe just a filter operation we filter out that code and we keep all the other codes and since we are doing creating an array that depends on a previous array we are creating a state that depends on the previous state and so we must do that in a callback okay the old rule uh, that was easy when we saw that but now it becomes complex in a, in a bit more complex uh, in, um, application so set uh, exams and uh, we take the old exams and we return a new array 
with the all the exams from which we removed the one with the guilty code. So all the exams dot filter exam where uh, the exam dot course code is different from the code. That should be enough. So we are recreating a new array uh, with all the exams whose course code is not the code that I'm being asked to delete. That's right. OK. What do you want to delete? Web application. 24 is too low. Hopla. I click on the button. I can delete information system security. I go here. I click on this button. And it's gone. We don't need to do anything with the table, deleting the rows and something like that. We just changed one data structure. And since this is a state, every change in the state is automatically propagated down to all the components that whose rendering depends on that state information. So let's go back to see what we did in the last step. First of all, we said we decided, okay, what is what can be what are the actions they may affect, may change the state? Or oh, the delete action. OK, so let's first identify the event that we want to process on click. And then we decide what, what we want to do. OK, we want to delete a row from the exam table with some parameters. OK, only the button knows which is the code. Uh, and now all the work was done to move or to say to, to receive a reference to this function that may delete a course from the component where the state is defined down to the component where the action must be executed. So we had to define a function here in exam table, pass it down to exam row exam row needs to propagate it down to exam controls and finally exam controls may use this function so it's a bit of boring because you need to explicitly pass down all the properties you need until you find a component that really needs to use them but then it's a, it's a trick where you can from a child component mutate or ask to mutate at least the state of a, of a father component of a grandfather in this case component and changing the state as the effect of re-rendering this component rendering this component runs again this map recreates many exam rows with the proper keys and uh, we see that uh, react sees that one key is missing and so we'll find which row in the table uh, was uh, is, is no longer required and we'll destroy it from the dom and for all the other rows, React will see that all the other parameters are the same, and so it doesn't need to be modified, it doesn't need to be re-rendered. So it will uh, uh, propagate down, it will re-render only some, uh, the component where some of the properties has actually changed. So it's actually it's very efficient. It, it looks like it's not very efficient uh, to recreate every time, the, but these are really just instructions in memory. We are just manipulating arrays in memory. So it's, they are very fast. The very the really expensive operations are those are those that involve the DOM, and we are actually doing relying on React for doing uh, our best. So it's a it's a bit of a stretch because we need to understand uh, or thinking our application not in terms of uh, what should they change or what should they do, but in terms of uh, how can the state evolve. What is the consequence of the state of the function of the application from my actions? And so everything will be regenerated from the state every time. So we don't we need we don't need to care about that. Once we have the mechanism for generating one snap snapshot of the application starting from proper and state, we only need to care 
about how to modify the state. Okay, so the three steps are the, the, the we walk through together are structuring the components, dynamically propagating the properties, and uh, let's say surgically uh, modifying the state uh, according to the different user actions. So adding the few actions that are really needed for modifying for evolving the state. And if step two of uh, Propagating properties was properly done, then step three really means just adding some information here and there, and everything will be regenerated correctly at the first time, at the first attempt at least. Okay, so it doesn't go always like this, that everything is right at the first try, but it's because I tried it yesterday, so I already knew the pitfalls, but uh, um, this is the idea of the process, the first process, okay? What we are still missing is to do complicated interfaces when we can edit, uh, update, uh, insert, and so on, because it will, we will need to learn how to use forms uh, in React, uh, which is a bit uh, of another complicated issue. But for this week, I think uh, understanding how to manage components, properties, and the state uh, with very simple modification like deleting or, or reordering or selecting uh, should be enough for you to work on. Okay? So uh, I think uh, I will push also this uh, this example um, on GitHub. If you have any other question right now, or you can ask me later on Slack uh, if you want. That's a uh, no, 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 no. Delete that. No, didn't only to the visibility. Delete really removed the array from the state, from this state variable. So actually, this uh, this state variable exams contained the list of exams, and we removed one of them. So actually, the, the exams array is has been changed. Um, uh, the information is just in the fake uh, exams, but it's fake, so it's not real information. So we are really deleted that for the application lifetime, of course. Then we will learn how to also propagate this deletion to the server when we do the survey. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think it's uh, all for now. Uh, sorry for being five minutes late again, as my usual. And uh, good work with the with the labs, and we'll see next week when we play with the forms and with the updating of the dates in a more serious way. Okay, thank you to everybody, and bye bye.